How do? Yes, it's the 30th of April and end of the month and time for me to say what you got this month, Wilderness? Yeah, it's the end of month, Bothole. Um, now this month has been a fairly lean month. Um, I haven't bought a whole lot, um, but what I lack in quantity I make up for in quality. <laughs> but uh, as you'll see when we get into the haul, uh, you know, you'll see what I mean. As there's only a hat now about seven items that I've actually received this month it doesn't make much of a haul and I'm gonna it's gonna be a short video otherwise so I'm gonna have to pad it out a little bit and there's a, there's a few things I can talk about to, to make this video a bit longer than uh, than it ought to be so without further ado let's get on now uh, this month started on Saturday the 1st of April where I did a couple of uh, third-party pre-orders with some um, online retailers uh, the first one was uh, with Kapow. I pre-ordered uh, the third run of Mastermind Creations reformatted R19 Cool Tour. Now this thing obviously very popular figure Mastermind Creations have had to do multiple runs of it to keep up with demand obviously I'm I only a bit late getting on the bandwagon ordered the third run and it's probably not going to arrive till, till the back end of May maybe even June so it's going to be a while before that turns up so I pre-ordered that, just over 100 quid. Uh, then it was, um, I went on to TFS Express and I pre-ordered uh, Mackie Toys Cross Dimension 01 SP Strike Noir. And again, he hasn't quite come out yet. Um, I was hoping he would arrive before the end of the month, but uh, he hasn't come out. So I expect he will uh, turn up uh, in the next week or so, but uh, still waiting for him. So first two items I bought this month <laughs> haven't got them yet now the next item to arrive was a carryover from last month it was that uh, web divers figure that I uh, bought off eBay and it was kind of delayed in the post and I thought it had been lost but it hadn't got lost it had just been uh, milling around in customs and got a small customs hit but uh, it's now arrived and here it is Web Divers 04 W04 Garion. Now here's his alt mode, and as you can see, he transforms into a, a pirate ship. <laughs> and this is part of the reason why I wanted this guy. I mean, there's not many boat formers. You don't get many boat formers, and to actually turn into a sailing ship. I mean, that's that's so bizarre. And and I like transformers that are a bit oddball and off the cuff and transform into unusual alt modes and this one definitely fits now that's one thing one tick against it one thing that floats my boat quite literally no pun intended but this guy transforms into a dragon and obviously you look at the box there's the box now the funny thing is uh, i've got a few web divers figures and i've got um what have I got? I've got um, Dragon, I've got Sharkon, and I've got uh, Gladion. And there's a couple of others I might be interested in, in getting. And this was one of the guys I was after. But until recently, I, I couldn't find this guy, anybody selling this guy on eBay at all. It was like, you didn't see any. And then back in the last month, was it? Well, well, last month, a whole bunch of them suddenly sprang up on eBay. And it was weird because there was like... There's about half a dozen sellers in Japan selling the same thing for roughly the same price. Now, what I think's happened here is that in Japan, uh, and this I know this this happens, sometimes you'll get a toy line like the, the Web Divers toy line that doesn't do particularly well, it doesn't sell particularly well. So all the unsold products get gathered together and then they get stuck in a, a storage warehouse and then they get left for years and years. And there's loads of these little sort of warehouses, toy warehouses dotted around Tokyo and a few other towns that are just full of you no know, you no know, unsuccessful toy brands and they just sit on them for like 10, 15, 10, 15, 20 years and then suddenly they'll break open one of these warehouses, they'll grab a load of stock, you know, knock it out on eBay and you know, sell it for more than what it was going for you know on the market when they were when they were new and obviously you know because it's, it'll be a collector's market by the time they come around to selling it and I think that's what's happened with this guy now he does have a few sort of minor QC issues but I reckon that's because obviously this guy's been in storage for the best part 15 years but as you can see absolutely splendid boat mode and the dragon modes 
interesting and I, and I like dragon formers as well so yeah th there's that about it it's a dragon former it it's a boat former and you know it's that's that's two things that uh, I like about it but yeah I've got him and he finally arrived just uh, it's got these little legs you can pull down yeah there's a few QC issues um, yeah a, a few sort of broken pegs and stuff like that and a few loose joints but uh, apart from that he's uh, absolutely splendid and uh, I'm glad I got him and he won't stand up <laughs> oh well so yeah there was that now the next thing that I bought <laughs> the robot of the hour or the month uh, I don't know whether I mentioned that I was getting this but uh, Masterpiece Megatron MP36 now every man and his dog is reviewing this figure at the moment um, very popular figure to be reviewing on YouTube um, I don't feel the need to review it because I only get a handful of viewers now. I mean, my viewing figures on my KTRT reviews is like dropping down to like 15, 20 views. And it's strange because my, my subscriber count keeps creeping up. But anyway, I didn't see the point in reviewing it. But uh, as I've got the camera on and uh, I've got Megs out, I might as well just say a few words about it. Now, I wanted to get this because it's it's a G1 gun former. It's, it's Megatron G1 style gun former. I love... Megatron gun formers. I just there's something about the engineering on them that really, really does it for me. And I was going to get this guy anyway. Now, the problem was um, when the initial pre-order came out. I can't remember. It was back end of last year, and you had uh, Kapow had two pre-order prices. They were doing it for um, 155 for sea freight and 165 for air, air mail, and then you had TFS Express. We're doing it for 165 but they had some special offer on whereby if you spent or up to bought 300 pounds worth of products within a certain period then you would get a, a 10 pound off voucher or something and be able to get um or, or get mp mags for like 150 quid anyway thing is um you know the the, the, the pre-order price was about 165 pounds sterling and i didn't really want to i was reluctant to pay that i thought it was expensive so I held off on the uh, you know the initial pre-order price. Of course, then a month, like a couple of months later, the toy starts coming out, and all the pre-orders are spoken for. They've all gone. It's it's sold out, and there's there's hardly any retailers left who've got it on the books. The only one that I found online retailer I found that still had it on offer on pre-order was uh, Robot Kingdom. Now I didn't have an account with Robot Kingdom. So I was looking on their website and they were doing it for $189 plus shipping. And I did a rough calculation and $189 was around about 150 quid at the time. And um, obviously you had to pay the postage. So I, I created an account, I went in, I was um, put it in my basket, then I uh, you know put my address and stuff in and then went to do the shipping and it, the shipping came out at like, nearly 50 quid for the postage and I thought well that's a bit steep and uh, all told the, the all up price was just shy of 100 quid it was like 199 pounds 37 or something like that and I was reluctant to buy it but because I'd already put it in my basket and created an account I thought right okay we're committed now buy so I went to buy it and as soon as it went to the PayPal page to do the PayPal payment went to put the PayPal in send payment boom PayPal kicks me out. Now I've had this, I was doing it on my mobile, I've had this problem before sometimes when I'm making PayPal payments on websites on my mobile. Sometimes it just doesn't work, it just, some just before you're about to commit to the payment, it, it just kicks you out. And I don't know why that is. So I tried it a couple of times and it just wasn't working, so I thought, sod this, empty my basket, quit out the site, went onto eBay, looked around, what, 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 what prices can I get it for? And then I saw, um, it going for like uh, just over like 192 pound with my mate Mr. Animatropolis, so I bought it from him. Uh, did get a small customs hit on it, so it, it, it come in at 196 pound something, and he's now the most expensive transforming toy that I own. 
Now I've transformed him into gun mode as you can see. Um, it took me over an hour to get this guy into gun mode. Now I did it without instructions, without using instructions. I did it without watching YouTube videos. I did it off the cuff by myself because um, to me transformers are a puzzle and I like to work them out for myself. This guy is very, very complex. Um, people are saying, well, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And there's these 3D animations of the, the transformation. And it looks quite elegant the way that it works. But as you can see on the gun mode, look at all the panel lines on it. Look at it. It's like Mackie Toy's Despotron. It's absolutely, it's like a, uh, it's like a jigsaw puzzle of parts that make up a gun. And I don't really like that. That's one of the things I, I'm not really that keen about it. But I was going to get this thing anyway because it's a Megatron gun former. Another thing I'm not too keen about is the colour they've used. Now they've used this very sort of dull metallic grey colour. To call it a silver, I mean under lights it kind of looks silver but it's it's more of like a metallic grey. Yes it's cartoon accurate because you know in a lot of the images from the show is in kind of a grey colour rather than silver and I can understand that. And they, they've basically gone for 100% cartoon accuracy with this and for the most part it works. It works as you know cartoon accurate but now speaking of cartoon accuracy um, speaking of the gun mode this is not an accurate representation of a Walter P38 but it's not supposed to be it's supposed to be a representation of Megatron's gun form from the G1 cartoon and obviously these bits here are not on a Walter P38 it's kind of got the rough outline of a Walter P38 and the one thing I will say about this is in terms of dimensions now the other masterpiece Megatrons I've got I've got Despotron, Mitron and I've got the MP5 when you transform them into gun mode um, Despotron and the MP5 are absolutely massively oversized and Mitron is kind of more realistically scaled but this guy now I've got the dimensions of the genuine weapon off a website and it's I think it's um 218 millimeters by 152 millimeters and if you measure this from here to here it's about 225 mil and from here to here it's about just over 150 so it's probably the most accurately scaled gun former we've got ever as regards to the uh, you know the Valter P38 but again it's not supposed to be that it's supposed to be a representation of his version from the show but you know it's it's comfortable to hold it's got spring loaded trigger blah 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 oh, this isn't a review this is just me saying a few things and it's, it's it's got a very complex transformation now another thing people have been whinging and moaning about paint chipping now this thing like people oh i won't doing that because you know you know some people are whinging then, wincing, and yeah, it scratches paint off the end of the barrel when you put this thing on. Now, I'm not bothered about that. I mean, transforming it, you, because of the tight tolerances on the pieces, you, you, you're gonna scratch bits of paint off it. This paint they've used, I mean, and virtually every single square millimeter of this thing is painted in one color or another. So it, it's unavoidable that you're gonna scratch bits on it. So yeah, there is that. Um, now the other thing of the, the the cost. Now let's get go into the cost of the thing. I paid just under two hundred quid for it, and it is by far the most expensive transforming toy that I own now. I was kind of reluctant to spend that amount of money, but I did. And can you justify the cost? Personally, I regret paying the price that I did for it, because when it comes to Megatrons. This guy is my number one. This is my main squeeze. This is my masterpiece Megatron, Mitron. And even though this guy is more tune accurate, I prefer this guy because when I unboxed him, he had such a profound effect on me. I mean, they say first impressions last and it definitely with this guy. I was so blown away when I unboxed this guy because he was the first masterpiece Megatron that I got my hands on. And he just blew me away. I was absolutely astounded by him. and. That feeling that I had for this guy has carried me through the others that I've bought. So when MP36 arrived, it was great. It looks looks fantastic, but you know, 
it's still got some of the problems that I don't like. It's like, it's the wrong colour. It should be more this, in my opinion, should be more the shiny silver than the dull silver. Um, it, you know, should have a more cohesive gun mode instead of all this crazy paving all over it. Um, now, justifying the cost again, um, it is it is expensive and the, the price of Masterpiece figures is slowly creeping up because, you know, Takara are saying, well, you know, we're, we're the official Transformer company, you know, we can basically charge what we want for these things. And you can understand that, but the parts count on this thing is off the off the roof. It's so many little, little, you know, little parts that, and with hinges on that all fit, fit together to form this gun mode. And on parts count alone, this would make it an expensive bot. But then you get all the accessories for it. Now you get, you get the, the barrel extension. You get that, and there's only, you, you didn't get it with Mitron, you didn't get it with Despotron, you didn't get it with the MP5, the only other Masterpiece Megatron you get the, the, you know, the gun, gun, the stock and the uh, the barrel extension with is a Polyon, and I haven't got a Polyon, so there is that. And he also comes with a shed load more of accessories. So he came with loads of accessories, and when you look at the amount of accessories it come with, you can understand, again, the cost. So he's a thing. I bought it. I'm a little. There are things about it that, personally, I would have not preferred to have paid the price that I paid for this. I would have preferred to have paid like 150 quid. That would have been more more the sort of price I would have preferred to pay. But I missed out on the early pre-orders. That was my fault. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's a thing. But the one thing I want to say before I stop talking about this um obviously this in my opinion is going to be the last official megatron gun former or uh, gun former we're going to get from uh, hasbro takara i reckon this is it this is the the final hurrah for the the gun former mold any mega masterpiece megatrons we get from now on will be either a tank mode or a movie like let's say uh, masterpiece Dark of the Moon Megatron that turns into the Mad Max truck. Can you imagine a masterpiece version of that? That would be pretty cool for the the masterpiece movie line. Um, yeah, so I reckon this is it. And obviously, there's some people thinking, well, there's going to get a Toys R Us exclusive Western release where they're going to do it in the bright silver and it's going to have the English sound effects on the uh, the gun. Blah blah blah. This and that. It ain't going to happen because of the encroaching gun laws in about. You know replica weapons in various countries there's no way they're going to be allowed to sell this in places like america or europe or Austral australasia i mean i was supposed to when i bought this it, it quite clearly said in the um the ebay thing that it was going to have the orange caps attached and when it arrived it didn't it didn't have the orange caps on <laughs> and i've seen other people's reviews where you know they bought it in the you know in whatever territory and they're supposed to have got orange caps and it hasn't come with them so i don't know what's going on there so yeah i don't think we're going to get any more official you know megatron gun formers i think this is it now takara could theoretically do repaints of this i think at least three repaints i mean they can do um obviously do a, a bright silver repaint to make it look more like that uh, they can do a black repaint so they can homage the um, the the Diaclone version or they can do the gold repaint for you know, the gold Megatron but I don't know I reckon this guy is going to be like hen's teeth I mean it's already selling out wherever you go and if you haven't got one already get in there quick because I reckon once these guys are gone I don't think it's going to get reissued again I reckon that's it this is this is it MP36 is the last official gun form you're going to get doesn't mean to say like KO companies and third party companies aren't going to make more, which they surely are. I mean, they've got Wei Jan, they're supposed to be bringing theirs out. So, and I'm still waiting for uh, Bold Form's BFO1 Gladius to, to appear. But uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to do a review on it. If you want to see a really good review of this, I strongly suggest you check out Jobby the Hong's review that he put up last night. He reviews this thing in just over 12 minutes no stone unturned it's absolutely cracking review he 
knocks it out of the park and he says a lot of things about it which I was going to mention about it if I reviewed it so yes I've got him he's great but he's not my Megs so there we go there's some padding out for the video right what next ah, more talky talky on the 15th of the month uh, obviously I went to this uh, Transformers and such meet up in Birmingham uh, I haven't done a video on it I, I took a few video clips and some photographs and I didn't feel no I needed to do a video of my own about it I mean uh, Chris Six Shot has uh, done some videos on it and I think he's gonna do another one but uh, whatever anyways it was a good little meet up there was about 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 a dozen of us uh, I mean you obviously had uh, Chris Six Shot and his family Natalie and uh, the kids uh, you had Gary Sherman, his mate, uh, F. Stop Cornopia, or whatever his name is. Um, uh, Pred was there, you know, uh, Destruction Snake Pit. Uh, There's quite a few guys. Oh, and um, Jermaine. Jermaine was there as well. Uh, we uh, had a, a very extended breakfast, and then we went wandering around the shops, and we went in a few shops. And I didn't actually buy any Transformer toys, which was kind of disappointing. Um, but what I did get was we went into a um, uh, Forbidden Planet at one point and uh, I bought a couple of comics. I got Revolutionaries number three, which is uh, kind of s kind of like a look back to an earlier time where a previous team of um, guys was looking for something, I don't know, sound waves in it anyway. It's, it's, t it's kind of detached from the uh, the story that was going forward, so it's it's a bit of a weird one. Then I got this. I got Lost Light number four. Now it wasn't until I got home that I realised I'd made a mistake because Lost Light number four. <laughs> I've already got this comic. I bought this one last month. And you see, the thing is, IDW do this thing every t every month. They bring a comic out. They do like half a dozen different covers. They do the the standard cover and then they do subscription A and subscription B and they do um, the retail incentive covers and then they'll do like a blank one which you can take along to a convention and get a uh, guest artist to do some artwork on it for you. So I didn't recognise the cover and I, I thought I needed it because I, I got like a little list on my phone of the issues I'm up to and I hadn't updated it and I bought this and it wasn't until I got home that I realised I'd made a mistake and <laughs> got a duplicate. So anybody want to... <laughs> Lost Light number four, because I got a spare one. And uh, we carried on going around the shops. Um, obviously, while I was in um, Forbidden Planet, I bought a couple of other things, even though they're not Transformer related. Five Nights at Freddy's action figure Foxy and a Foxy plush. Um, I was looking at these and thinking, oh, I'd love to get one of those. Um, I kind of, for a time, I was really into watching the uh, the... the uh, the fan made YouTube videos of Five Nights at Freddy's. I've never actually played the game, but uh, I do, did like watching the videos and I was really hooked on watching them for a good time. And, and I kind of like some of the characters that are in, in them, especially Foxy. So I, I got these. Um, couldn't make me mind at which one to get, so I bought them both. But uh, they're pretty cool. And then later on, we went round the shops and we went into uh, HMV and was looking at stuff. And while I was in there, I got a couple of CDs. Now I'm a fan of AHA and Roxette. Um, this is a, an earlier album of theirs, Minor Earth, Major Sky. And this is the latest album from Roxette. Now I've listened to both these albums and to be honest, they're nothing special. They're a bit you know, bleh, middle of the road. It's taken me, I've had to listen to these things over and over and over and over and over again to sort of get a handle on them to figure out what they're about. But there's not many songs on these that I really like. So it's, kind of difficult to, uh, to to like them but they are what they are and I bought them so yeah that's something else I bought on this uh, little outing yeah it was great to to uh, hang out with uh, you know G uh, Gary Cher, Mr Hot Rodney Prime and uh, Chris Sixshot and Natalie all in a blur and all the other guys uh, we went into some uh, pubs later on and had a few drinks and then some of the guys had to go early and then we went back to an, uh, this um, sort of heavy metal nightclub which was a bit loud and I didn't really uh, 
appreciate that much but uh, then Jermaine had to go and of course he was going back on the train and it was this, one of the trains that I was going to take so uh, me and Jermaine left on the train and he we rode back on the train back to Leamington where I got off and uh, he took the train back into London so it was it was a good day out it was great and uh, a bit disappointed I didn't pick up any Transformer toys but there we go it was a thing and uh, it was uh, good to see some of the guys so where are we now right okay uh, back to back to normality uh, next item I got which arrived on the 19th of April was this guy I've obviously done a review on him hey turning met card HG Evan um, getting into these um, these other brands I mean hello uh, Carbot is my main KTRT brand that I buy but it's been going off the boil a lot lately and they every year they bring out a new season and a new set of toys and the toys they bring out now are, are less based on realistic vehicles they're more you know fictitious ridiculous over the top combiners and I'm not really into that but uh, I had a smaller version of this guy and I wanted to get the bigger one and uh, he was one of the figures I'd overlooked previously so I've gone back and looked at some of the other figures I haven't picked up from previous lines and this was one of those and uh, he's a uh, very chunky it's got unusual legs I mean you can't straighten his legs properly his legs don't go completely straight so he's, he's quite difficult to pose or stand up properly but uh, apart from that he's pretty good he's pretty cool and uh, then it was on the 21st we had Tobot Athlon Alpha and he's one of the first figures from the Tobot Athlon line when it came out was it year before last uh, three figures. I've got two of them. Uh, I don't want to get Fata because Fata just looks rubbish to be honest. Uh, this guy's very limited articulation. He, he looks great in robot mode and the car mode as is to die for. The car mode is absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, I've got him. And then that pops out and you've got his mind core in there. But yeah, got him. And then he's got the usual you know, clicky joints high quality plastic nice and shiny just lacking any meaningful intermediate articulation which is just typical of a KTRT bot so there's that and then we uh, the other day went up town on uh, Friday the 28th and went to Spartown Comics and managed to pick up Optimus Prime number six so the spoilers the the fight that was going on between the uh, the Junkions and the Sharticons against the Autobots and the Earths was as, as sort of been resolved now uh, but it's interesting to see where it goes forward from here but uh, yeah got that and that's pre pretty much all I bought this month um, now a couple of things I want to mention before I sign off um, I did mention in previous month that I was getting close to bot 700 and obviously looking at the list I'm still four bots away and uh, now obviously I, I pre-ordered those bots at the beginning of the month those third party figures and they haven't turned up yet and I'm not expecting them to arrive until at least well um, Strike and Noir will probably won't arrive till next month and then maybe later on in the month might get Kultor and there's um obviously there's some uh, third party figures I want to make a play on tomorrow come the first of the month from Kapow if they're still available and then there's uh, some more KTRT bots that I've got my eye on there's uh, the new Tobot Athlon season 3 bots coming out and there's, there's one of them in particular I'd like to get my hands on and there's a new figure from the uh, uh, Geo Mecha Beast uh, Guardian Beast line that's that's coming out, but it hasn't actually appeared on eBay yet. So I'm, I'm looking to pick that up, but uh, because it's a new figure, it'd be kind of expensive. So I've still got four bots to get to get 700, and there's a good chance that you know it will fall onto a bot that arrives in the post. It'll be you know in the lap of the gods, you know, hands of fate. So uh, that's that, and also obviously now we've got the the first the uh, Transformers of last night figures are starting to appear in the shops I haven't actually been out on a hunt yet uh, I might do one next month 
so uh, there is that to look forward to so that is that that is the end of my haul this month it wasn't much of a haul um, <laughs> not transformers wise anyway I mean it was only seven transformer related items and uh, three of those were comics so yeah that's me TFR Wilderness hope you've enjoyed this little video and uh, I will see you next time ta-da